Welcome to Transform Working Life Series. I'm Jan Sturgesson, Chairman of ICC, International Christian Chamber of Commerce. And we have a mission to teach and train and to tell about the opportunity and possibility for us all to serve the Lord full time, whatever we do. Serving the Lord in our daily work and finding God's yes to what we do. You might be in a finance function, or you might be in, in the cleaning business or the high tech industry. Whatever you do, you can do it and serve the Lord. We have a vision in ICC. So you can say the vision we have is a dream about a worldwide people who in their business and working lives are experiencing the reality of goals, strategies and plans, becoming an outward manifestation of an inward walk of faith, leading to a glorious release of the kingdom of God. At work, at home, in society, wherever you go, because where you are is the kingdom. And today we are dealing with uh, a very interesting topic, understanding the kingdom of God. Scripture says, and you know, the disciples always asked Jesus, when will the kingdom come? And Jesus said, well, the kingdom is inside of you. It will come to a full completion in the day when Christ returns, but the kingdom is inside of you. So the kingdom is the life in the Holy Spirit, and that's God's domain. The question is then, how can God's kingdom come? Sometimes you know, we pray, your kingdom come, your will be done. And I think it's about we all, as Christians, we have the ability by the Holy Spirit to manifest the kingdom. And that means we need to be in the will of God with our lives. So how can we be, be in the will of God? Well, we have to pray to the Lord and try to understand what he has for us. Because scripture says he has plans for us. There's a calling for each and every one of us. And go and do things which he has prepared for us so we can walk into. It's not always easy, but the Lord has a way. We need to find the answers and the solutions in him. So looking into this world, and we can say that the creation and the garden of Eden, that was God's domain. And you remember, God said to Adam and Eve, go into the Garden of Eden, and there you should tend and keep, and multiply, take care of. This is kind of a stewardship you know, task the Lord gave Adam and Eve, to take care of, of the Lord's account, on the Lord's behalf. So we are called to stewardship, just like Adam and Eve, in our daily work to do things as good as we can, led by him, manifesting the kingdom, fulfilling the God's will in my life while working. As a teacher, as a policeman, as a whatever you are into, remember there is a part of what you do in the kingdom of God for you personally. And let us also remember that uh, when God says to Adam, go into this garden, of Eden between the four rivers. Everything was great. Sin has not yet come. So you can think about why should they go into this plot of land between the rivers? They could be all over the place in the wilderness, in the forest, enjoying life. I think this tells us that, go, that, that the Lord, God, is very specific. He has a specific piece of land or a specific task for you to receive and to start to work on. So I would ask you, have you found your Garden of Eden in your life, in your working area? What functions you are in? What industry you are working in? What you are doing? So you can do it with joy, excitement, and be an example of being salt and light, manifesting the kingdom of God at work. God was the first who worked. That's why to transform a working life is on the Lord's heart very much. And we will deal with this topic in different, on, under ver different themes in this series. But let us remember that God was the first worker. So we are today in a work spirit-filled workers movement, I would say, a grassroots movement who like to transform the working life led by the Lord, led by the Holy Spirit. That means that we all have a part to play. And we can, so to speak, 
understand that the Lord is interested in my work. He will take care of it if I allow myself to say, Lord, help me. So I can manifest the kingdom of God. And we should remember also in scripture, it says that the kingdom of God is righteousness, joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. So do you have righteousness at your work or do you have corruption? Do you have problems? Do you have, you know, bribery and things? If so, we should read Psalms 15 and understand that that's not the way it should be. Because the Lord says, if you like to be on my holy mountain, please behave. Please be, do it right. Please be honest. Please be transparent. Please be a role model for those people who don't really yet hear the truth. So righteousness is important. Do you have joy at your work? Maybe not. If you don't have, why don't you say to the Lord, help me so I can be a cheerful, joyful person, even during hard circumstances. It's really, maybe it's a hard, hard work, it's big problems with our competitors, or we, left some, we, we lost some staff and we have real big problems with the finances, or whatever it is. How can I keep my inner joy as a good example of being an ambassador at my work, serving the king, even during days of rain and dark clouds, so to speak? Because I think joy is a, it's not a kind of a, a, a final destiny. It's, it's, a, it's a condition. It's a way of living. It's to say, Lord, I want to have joy, your joy in my heart. That creates peace. We said peace is also part of the kingdom. Peace and freedom. And scripture says that the kingdom of God is not food and, 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 and drink. It's power in the Holy Spirit. The Lord maybe have some surprises for you that you can be led by him to execute on his behalf. The Lord will lead you sometimes to pray, sometimes to say something humbly to a person and that will impact him and he will maybe change his behavior or his life. Or you can talk to the owners or some of the leaders but not because you should be good and try to be a, a, a great guy and, and, and produce you know, things in your own life. No, you should try to be at peace. You should be a servant. You should do it when the Lord builds something, or it makes you thrilled in your ins on your inside to, to say something. So the kingdom of God is the most important thing. And let me also share with you that we, we, we need to to live a life, the condition is to be born. And to live a real life in the kingdom, you need to be born again. But does it stop here and then we just wait for come to heaven? No, we need to mature. And this graphic says we have to be born physically alive, we have to be born again spiritually alive, but then there's a dividing line and this is about how do we acquire the rules and culture of the kingdom? How do we start to understand that the life with the Lord is to listen, hear, obey, and do. So we can say, if we listen, the Lord will probably speak to us. If we obey him, what he tells us to do, he will take action and things will happen because we're walking by faith together with him in humility. We are humble persons who long to see the Lord at work. This means that we can manifest his intentions here and now, where we are. We can bear fruit for the kingdom. Whatever you do, there's an ability. But this is a process of maturing, of, 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 of being purified, sanctified, sometimes circumcised. Because the Lord has plans for you and he wants you to change. So when you come and you surrender, say, Lord, please hear me, Lord. I give up. So you can take over. And now you help me so I can transform my own life, my own will, my own behavior, my own way of speaking and acting and so on. And if you do so, I can assure you it will be a new season in your life. New fruits will come on the tree if you are planted close to the river. God bless you. Take care and walk with him in your daily working life. To learn more about transforming your working life, including transformed working life training events taking place near you, go to our website 
www.transformedworkinglife.org.